What the Freud? What the Freud are we doing? Repeating old patterns that always end up in chaos, defenses and breakdowns and how to get out of all that mess, which we will be mind mapping today around the topic of embracing what we deserve. Just a little hint, not the narcissist. So tonight is a call in show as usual. So please Feel free to call in and get on the couch and uh, share with me and the audience a little bit about you and what the Freud is going on in your life so that we could break it down and uh, carve out a new pathway for you. Um, the, the topic uh, is inspired by the fact that mainly what comes up in the office is something of the sort of the relationship breakdown. And I think not enough is talked about in terms of how do we embrace something good? How do we embrace and get what we deserve? So I'm going to start by making some distinctions about logic versus psychologic. And psychologic is something that uh, is deeper, uh, unconscious, not obvious to the logical system. Logic, as you know, is pretty clean. It's um, black and white. It's uh, one plus one equals two. It's just that psychologic is seen through a cracked lens of perception and doesn't necessarily make logical sense. But if you study the logic of the psyche, which we will do tonight, and if we mind map the logic of the psyche, things start to make more sense. And then you like, like what I'm trying to convey to the world will learn how to think like a shrink. And one of the things that will help you think like a shrink is my book, Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect. And if you haven't already downloaded a copy of that book or ordered it off of Amazon, uh, please grab the free one or order the, uh, the actual physical copy of the book. And I just want everybody to know that I have a presence on Instagram and you can look that up. And every week uh, we've been blogging about the subject. So look on my website, psychologicalhealingcenter.com and you will see a beautiful article entitled Embracing What We Deserve, Not the Narcissist. And that will be a summary of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Of course, I'm going to add a few more uh, insights and then give you an opportunity <clears throat> to jump in, ask questions, and uh, let's analyze this and connect the dots. So first of all, now that you know there's a difference between logic and psychologic, we could apply it to embracing what we deserve and really um, beginning to question why we don't get what we deserve. So logically, we might think, well, you know, we've got all of these qualities and all of these aspects to us that are, are, are very um, wonderful and uh, of the light, so to speak, of, of great qualities that another human being would want to participate uh, in and with. Uh, but then again, we have saboteur type of negative core beliefs that rip apart the logic and uh, bypass it and uh, shadow over it and then basically compromise your uh, deservedness. So um, let's go through what is going on here on a causal basis and why this is popping up in your life. So first of all, we must raise the bar of what we have pre previously settled for 
uh, we must raise this bar and uh, we have to understand that it is our parents who set the bar. So if we go to the mind map and uh, look at panel number one, you see that white light in the background represents the best of your best. It represents um, self-actualization, uh, your light, all of the qualities about you that are healthy and conscious and enlightened. And then we've got all of those uh, shadows that compromise your light. And these shadows are metaphors for um, childhood wounds. So childhood wounds most definitively block your potential, block your ability to manifest the best of your best. So let's go over them again. Many of you know this because you've been uh, students of the mind map. Maybe you've even been through the system. And, uh, and I'm going to go through them carefully so that you can understand what these are. So the wounds of childhood are either wounds of, of things that were done to you or not done for you. So they're basically the abuses and the neglect. So the abuses would be physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, verbal abuse, uh, being smothered and controlled, helicopter parenting would be an example. And then the neglects would be uh, in, the uh, in the category of uh, emotional, physical neglect, uh, or uh, 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 the, the other wound that obviously comes up a lot on this uh, show is the wound of narcissistic parenting, which is a system gone wrong, where the parents put their own needs before the needs of the child and turn the system around so that um, instead of the, the, the love and the, um, the flow of care and uh, um, the flow of nurturance going to the child, the flow is redirected toward the parents and the child um, doesn't feel that empathy coming from the parent and ends up compromised in uh, usually feeling a sense of, a strong sense of, of being loved for who they are and not for what they do. So these wounds then set the bar for how you're going to accept or not accept people into your life. So for example, if you come from a family that lacks empathy, well, it's going to be familiar and familial for you to accept somebody into your life that lacks empathy. If you come from a family uh, where verbal abuse is common, it's not going to seem that bad because that's where you come from. And so what's the, what's the big deal? You know, everybody yells at each other, everybody puts each other down. So uh, there isn't this sense of, uh, wow, that's really a violation, it almost seems normal. So that's what I mean by parents um, setting the bar. So once parents set the bar, then it's really hard for us to step up to the deserving category because what happens out of the treatment of the first few years of life and, and also beyond is that um, these treatments turn into subtle and not so subtle um, messages. They also uh, create reactions to this wound in the form of anxiety in the form of, of shutting down in the form of reactions that are more primitive brain based rather than logical. So these reactions live in the amygdala and the amygdala is the fight flight freeze fawn part of the brain. And this part of the brain gets activated upon uh, pain. So when there's a painful experience from the beginning of, uh, of infancy on onward and the, uh, and, the, and the blueprint of that pain is your family of origin and then multi-generations of, uh, of your family of origin and overlaid by cultural wounds, well, that doesn't feel very safe sometimes. It doesn't feel nurturing, doesn't feel 
uh, containing, and it certainly uh, lowers the bar of expectations. And so it makes it hard for us to embrace what we deserve because what we think we deserve is all pretty much recorded in these negative core beliefs. So if you look at panel three, um, panel three is a metaphor for, um, for our encoding. And if you could look at the structure of the DNA, I'm gonna break it down metaphorically for you. Uh, first of all, notice the haze in the background. Um, that's a, a metaphor for the toxicity of the family. Um, notice the, the mother and the father bond, which entwine around each other and the bonds that, that, that are created between these two DNA strands. And then if you notice on the strands are little people and they're lying around and walking around and hanging around and they're not really manifesting their, the best of their best. Why? Because the DNA representative of the mother and the father have multi-generational uh, woundings encoded in, in them. And so that they're not really building a very sustainable structure for the children. And they're creating a system gone wrong that is built of, of, of um, a defective uh, psycho, uh, psychological elements, if you will. So what happens to this is that once these psychological triggers get uh, activated, we then go into the WTF or what the Freud land, which is chaos, defenses and breakdowns. And I'm using this simple language on purpose because um, I, I know that, that, that as a psychologist, there are all kinds of uh, fancier words for these things and family systems and, 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 and parentified children and dysfunctional this and that. But I think it's more important for you to see how this entire uh, system is built so that it then ends up compromising um, you. So this is a call-in show, everybody. I would love to hear from you. It's almost, um, let's see, a quarter into the, the show. So we have plenty of time for call-ins. And don't forget to grab that uh, blog, which is already up there on my website, psychologicalhealingcenter.com. And certainly all of you are welcome to uh, request a copy of the book, the free PDF or order it on Amazon and also request a free consultation, which we are happy uh, to provide. So let's go through this again. Number one, parents set the bar. So why is it that we don't embrace what we deserve? Because our psychologic tells us that we don't deserve much. So this panel one wounding creates reactions in us that are fear-based, anxiety-based, so on. And then they encode into this negative core, core belief department, which limits us even further. Uh, Dr. Albert Ellis, uh, father of cognitive behavioral uh, uh, therapy, talks about limiting core beliefs. And this is what I mean by these limiting core beliefs. They limit your ability to see yourself as worthy, to see yourself as lovable, to see yourself as important enough, to see yourself as um, anything really all that much. So then that's where the bar gets lowered uh, and you lower your ability to see that you deserve anything better than uh, what's been set by, by your family of origin. And so the work that people do to journey through the mind map entails identifying these childhood wounds and reactions, shedding some uh, truth light on these negative core beliefs that are ingrained in uh, our psyche based on these um, lies and misperceptions and misconceptions that then stick in there. And sometimes they run so deep that uh, they're not exposed till later. Uh, today I was working with a particular 
person and uh, we were on panel number six where we were starting to process these feelings more heavily, more in depth. And uh, one of the beliefs came out in this conversation that was not caught earlier on in, in our work. And it was shocking uh, that this person actually believed that she was severely damaging uh, 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 to the world, essentially, and that um, her core belief was something along the line of um, you know, just never going to be good enough and I'm, I'm just a mess up and I, you know, I don't even deserve anything at all, which of course blocked her from embracing what she does deserve because in essence, this person is a really good person and a lovely heart and great human being, but yet the message that she was message and messages that she was imprinted with were so profound and so profoundly um, overshadowing her ability to see herself clearly uh, that they took over her life, lowered her bar severely and limited her uh, psychological growth. And so through the journey, you get to identify these limitations and break out of what I refer to as a uh, psychological prison, because that's what it creates. So we can't embrace what we deserve when we're in prison. Uh, so we, we also need to be able um, to Dr. Judy uh, boundaries through this. Yeah, thank you. Is there a call in? We do have a call. Mm, bring it on. Thank All right, you. here you go. You're live. Okay. Hi, how are you? Uh, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Is this Dr. Judy? It is. And what is your name? And don't forget, you can make one up if you're not comfortable sharing it. And um, no, my name is Lori. Hi, Lori. Nice to speak with you. Okay. And how, how are you relating to tonight's topic? Now, let me, will you please repeat that? I'm sorry. So tonight's topic is embracing what we deserve. Okay, and obviously not the narcissists. And so um, was there a particular reason that you called for tonight's topic? How, how is- Yes, yes. That, and so the, how are you- The reason to I'm, I'm wanting, the reason I'm calling you tonight, Dr. Judy, is I realized a long time ago through doing soul searching and shadow work, I realized a long time ago my worth and after years, like you were saying, people like to tell you what your worth is. And when you wake up and say, no more, I want to grow. I want to be better. I'm going to do better when you haven't, when you haven't had that boundary, when you don't, have, don't do your boundaries, mm -hmm. people tend to use and abuse that in you. So when you break free out of that prison and say, uh, uh, no more. Right. Um, oh my goodness. The hell I've been through. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and you've done so much work. Apparently you understand the concept of, of, of looking at yourself through other people's eyes. And where does that come from is as infants, as children, we look to our parents to self-define. That's just how it works. So who are we? We don't know. Are we lovable? Are we important? Are we special? We don't know, but surely our parents are going to be reflections of that or not reflections of that. And so that's why when we don't have proper mirroring and attunement and uh, a family structure that supports us and all the attachment theory uh, aspects of good enough mothering and fathering and family system gone right, then we're susceptible, as you said, to these shadows. And then we can look in other people's eyes and if they're friendly, uh, okay. And if they look at us with judgment and criticism and try to demean and devalue and destroy us, which is par for the course for the narcissistic system gone wrong, then we will right. 
we'll ex absorb it, you know, like you said, no boundaries, we'll absorb it and then we'll make conclusions about ourselves until you confront your shadows and say, that's enough already. I want to grow. I want to be, I want to, um, uh, I want to see myself in a, in a corrective uh, uh, way as opposed to in the, the, the crap lens way of seeing yourself. Right. And in that process also, I found a uh, deep spirituality with my worth because mm -hmm. I believe that without my creator, I am nothing. And there's such a different concept that you find out because when you're not comfortable uh, being close with someone that doesn't have your same morals or your same values or your beliefs, and when they gaslight and make you feel like you're odd because you know who you are and can and should, good, you know, you can do better than this. Right. And they want to just hold, the narcissist wants to just hold you back and keep you in hell and laugh and joke and think it's all right. Please tell me it's not. <laughs> right. And, you know, they can do that when parents set the bar for that kind of an atmosphere. Right. So if your parents mm -hmm. did that to you, then that's going to be familiar and familial. And you'll allow, you know, I, I had a, 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 an episode that I titled, I forgot exactly what, but it was, I think it was called the law of allowance versus the law of attraction. So if our boundaries are not built properly, if we don't vet people, if we don't have a high bar for ourselves and for our lives, then we let our uh, other people across this barrier that may not be so mm -hmm. healthy for us right and then they infiltrate they infiltrate our psyche and then they get into our brain like a psycho virus okay because it makes you psycho and then mm -hmm. you buy into it mm -hmm. and it's the same process that they're really replicating over and over again over and over and why do you buy it because you bought it when you were an infant you bought all this poison you you, you know you soaked it in and so when the new poison comes along that just tastes familiar so there you go again and that's why it's so important to do the work and not just understand it cognitively but really source the pain and understand how you ingested it, digested it, and how you're manifesting it, and then you've got to take down the system. Um, so, so. Do you think positivity? Do you think uh, I've been told that I have no more? I've lost my tolerance level mm -hmm. to the to the narcissist level in yeah. my life, and I am not a magnet. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I am not a magnet. Dr. Judy. Oh, congratulations. Okay. And why did you lose your tolerance level? Because if you think of molecules, all right, so if you have a hydrogen and an O2 molecule, mm -hmm. they attract each other to form water. And if you have the molecule of low self-esteem and somebody wants to take advantage of it, then you will like hand and glove pair up with that person and the game begins the game of demeaning devaluing destroying and then the other side is oh no please don't people pleasing and, and love so bomb and so and, yeah right you're right buying into the love bombing but when we heal we no longer buy in we no longer feel an affinity for that kind of dynamic and so we repel it okay and then we're we're free to to bond to right. a like-mindedness and that's why the compatibility is important you were talking about spiritual compatibility emotional compatibility mm -hmm. life goal compatibility we, we have to mm -hmm. somehow be aligned with the people that we invite um, into our lives I'm okay with me, yeah. and I don't mean that conceited in any way. And that's not. I have a special light. Mm -hmm. I have a special. We all have a 
some of us have a special light and we speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so with that clear lens of perception, you're no longer vulnerable to other people's perception of you. And if there's anything that you feel that you need to self correct by self reflecting on you, then you can do that. You can look in the proverbial mirror and say, you know what, I, I don't like that aspect of me and I need to work on that. And so that becomes a, something different than demeaning and devaluing and destroying yourself. That's like a course correction. See the difference? Yes, I do. And it's good to look in the mirror and say, I'm okay. And you're, you've got things to offer and love and forwardness and family and grandchildren and things that are good. Yeah, so... I don't have to stay stuck. No, and what's possible on the other side is uh, 789, which are panels 789, which is the paradigm shift. I call it the synergy panel. If you look at all those, uh, those, those orbs, they come together to form light, and that is metaphorical of different aspects of you finally aligning and revealing your special light, or it also is symbolic of gravitating and interfacing and interconnecting with people who are, are like-minded and will support your light. And it's specifically the one plus one is greater than three phenomenon versus this other mm -hmm. thing that actually I wrote down a, a, a quote from my book, which I'll read to you. Uh, it is, uh, where did I write it? And okay. thank you, Dr. Judy. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for calling in and feel free to keep in touch and I'll, I'll describe the other part of panel seven, which is the flip side. So appreciate it. You were going to read something. Yeah, I'm going to read it right now. Uh, so there's a part of my book called How to Be a Vampire Slayer. And it's in my book, Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect, which everyone is welcome to a free PDF um, uh, copy. Besides, your, I'm sorry, what were you saying? I said, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So here, I'm going to read this. Besides sheer avoidance, you can protect your psyche by recognizing the gradual depletion of your energy and limiting your contact with that person. Good boundaries are key to making sure that you are able to screen and filter them out. Selflessness, generosity, and altruism each have their limitations. You must make a sacred commitment to protect yourself from these invaders and balance your kindness, unselfishness, and nurturing with self-protection. So they're looking for kind people. They're looking for altruists. They're looking for givers. Your best defense mechanism is to become like a semi-permeable membrane, which means that you vet people. You don't just let them in and let them through. You don't give them a pass card. You see if that person is somebody that is going to enhance your light and you, see, you check out to see their level of health. Um, so the semi-permeable sem cell membrane, if you will, allowing in only good emotional nutrients and screening out the poisons, okay? And that's only possible yes. once you've done this work, because if you haven't, then uh, there's a pass card to everybody and anybody, and they, you know, come on down. The price is right. Absolutely you not. Know, they could just keep taking. You call that a semi-permeable, semi-permeable membrane. membrane. I borrow these terms from my biology courses, which I, I, I so loved biology when I was a, a, a young student, and so I think there's a lot of wisdom that nature can teach us. And we can cross learn from one science like biology and apply it to psychology. Of course, metaphorically, you know, when you have a cell in your body, right? You've got this cell and when there is too much poison in your blood, it could close down and become non-permeable. Understood? And if they're- Understood if, completely. 
Right, and it, and if it be, if it's too permeable and there's not good stuff floating around in your bloodstream, then it'll poison you. There's no barrier. So what is the healthy mm -hmm. cell? The non-permeable one, also on the other side, the flip side is it doesn't let in the nutrients. Get it? So that cell will die. Okay. If the cell is too permeable, right. it can. Uh, it's not a good thing either because if it's too permeable, it doesn't vet the poisons. So that cell will die. Also, if it's semi-permeable, it will act as a a membrane that's flexible enough to let in the good and keep out the bad. Get it? I do. Thank goodness. Yeah, thank you. You are really smart and you are really awesome, Dr. Judy, tonight. That's so sweet of you. I thank don't want to take up too much time if another caller is waiting for you, but you. your information tonight is life saving. I really, really appreciate it. I hope I made it simple enough for everybody to understand. And Laura, I wish you all the best and congratulations for the amount of work you've done. And now you have earned to be uh, embracing what you deserve. Now you could take it in because you've got, you freed yourself from this toxic bond and now you're free to have healthy bonds. Okay, so, okay. Yes. I'll, I'll uh, believe that. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. You take care. And, and uh, all right. The, yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I hope that I really make psychology simple. This is something that I love to do because when you're a psych student, there's just so many labels and words and complicated phrases. And how the heck are, are, are people supposed to wrap their head around all that mega information? So the mind map is my version of E equals MC squared, uh, just a, a, a boiled down definition of how wounds of childhood uh, infect us and, 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 and carry on multi-generationally and destroy us and how to basically uh, uh, extricate ourselves from all that mess and shift out. So if there are other people who want to call in, please do love to talk to you, get to know you. And uh, it, it's always so fascinating uh, to, uh, to meet people and see what unconscious forces work within because those are the saboteurs. And those are the kinds of saboteurs that keep us from embracing what we deserve. Because if unconsciously we're pushing away the good, if we're pushing away the nutrients, then we're going to end up under serving ourselves because we're down there at the low bar that our parents set for us. And we're always going to be um, uh, in that, that pool, uh, psychological pool of um, deprivation and not, not enough. And so if you're not where you want to be and you feel that you're not deserving then check out the wounds of your childhood how you reacted to it and what you encoded in there and consider doing the work of setting yourself free um, now i had a very interesting question that uh, was emailed to me um, thank you robert and the question was well how do you embrace uh, what you deserve if it's not really showing up in your life. And uh, I think this is a challenge for every human being. People might feel, well, I deserve a great partner. I deserve this. So, but yet, you know, where is that great partner? And there are no guarantees in life. But what we have to understand is we deserve to be even alone and not be with a horrible partner just because we're not liking to to be alone so it would be a case of you deserve to be surrounded by your good enough self as opposed to deserve to or undeserve to be in a uh, toxic relationship so i think as long as you feel that you're not uh, bound by these horrible 
wounds of childhood and, 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 and core beliefs. And if you would give yourself the opportunity to be patient and wait, and it may not come in the form that you want it to, uh, it's just that you certainly deserve, in my opinion, freedom over toxicity. So think about that. So even if you're out there, you're feeling lonely and you feel that you haven't quite met your uh, uh, partner or your best friend or the right uh, career path or whatever it may be, right? Uh, isn't it better and uh, uh, healthier for you to not find yourself with this low bar of whatever was that low bar for you and isn't it healthier for you to just be free to accept the higher bar? Uh, so please call in. We'd love to hear from you and uh, understand what the Freud is going on in your life so that we don't keep repeating this thing. And uh, we now see the state of the world. And, 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 and unfortunately, it, uh, we're, we're seeing such ugly things in the world, um, invasions, wars, so on, and it, very, very frightening. And um, this mind map was originally intended as a pathway to heal global disconnect. And we could see global disconnect rampant. It always has been, now it's just blown up and we have more media to cover it. And uh, the weapons are bigger and more ominous and so on but you can see that when we don't solve our micro problems and we don't heal our individual wounds then we create macro problems so all of these wounded individuals on the planet who have not healed and done the work well now it's it's gone macro okay and um i've done several shows on power and control versus intimacy and love. And we're seeing a lot of power and control globally and not enough intimacy and interconnectivity and, and, and love. That's, that's the real shortage. I know we have a shortage of gas and a shortage of this and a shortage of that. I think the big, big shortage that nobody is talking about is the shortage of empathy, the shortage of of love for each other, the sh a shortage of being humane. So this concept of join the human race, healing global disconnect dates back to 2001. I talk about it in my um, video, the nine panel mind map um, uh, video to, to healing, which is available. And you can show everybody a picture of that. It's a download and you can purchase this download and I go through all the steps of the, uh, the mind map. Tony, if you don't mind putting it up there so people can see it. No, it's actually the video program. <laughs> Got it. And you also have another yeah, call I, coming I, I, in. Uh, thank you, thank you. You can see it comes with a journal which you download and print and the PDF of the book. And uh, it's a, uh, a way for you to learn the mind map and start processing your feelings and of course uh, it, 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 it would be better um, to pair the, the video with a, a therapist that you can uh, process your feelings with. So there it is, the Mind Map video series, and that's something that uh, you can absolutely use as a tool to learn this system and to start turning around your system gone wrong to a system gone right. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about... Um, Dr. Judy, you have another call also, by the way. Okay, I'd rather have that than talk <laughs> a little more. Thank All you. right, so, here you go. Uh, You're on the air. Hi. Hi, Dr. Judy. This is Robert. You were answering my qu question? Yeah, of course I'll answer your question. Thanks for emailing me that. Now, so do you get it, Robert? You know, there's no guarantees in life, right? We don't know... Uh, well, Yes, but you know you well you, when you go into the world. Okay, I I w wanted to finish because even with all the 
education, the psychoeducation, and decoding yourself when you still go into the world and then you feel that low energy, it's it's challenging even with the work we do to stay focused when you're surrounded by that if it's a work and let's take it for you know a work environment and just you know also the world we we live in and trying to navigate with that was also the other part of the question okay so the, the question that you asked was what i i uh, mentioned earlier so how do you do it when it doesn't always show up okay so so maybe it hasn't shown up or aspects of it have shown up and we talk a lot about our dogs uh, Robert and I are big dog lovers and uh, and dogs are so special in that they offer this unconditional love that sometimes we don't have from other um, human beings um, it's just that Robert I can ask you isn't it better for you to um, to, to just hold your own power and your own life than to share it with the wrong people or persons? Absolutely. And, and my dog is with me right now. And it, it can be also um, discouraging when you are out in the world and you see that toxicity just so prevalent, you know? So it, you have to be that with the, permeable uh, non-permeable membrane most of the time you know and you know it's it's challenging surrounding yourself with with those well, positive people when it when work everyday life right so when you go to work it might not be the most pleasant environment <clears throat> and sometimes you just have to look at it as your paycheck your way of paying the bills and and so on and then when you go home you got your time for yourself and um, I think one thing that helps in, in terms of doing this kind of work is what I've been speaking about earlier which is not to let other people's opinions of you or activations of you fire you up so that you keep getting triggered into chaos defenses and breakdowns so um, once you understand that you don't have to be this reactive person to their childhood wounds and their negative core beliefs, because we all have them and um, people who have them and don't process them, well, guess what they're going to do? They're going to project them onto other people or they're going to swallow these horrific feelings and get depressed and sick. Uh, but these feelings don't just disappear. You can't just uh, wash them away by ignoring them or uh, um, just repeating a bunch of affirmations over them because as much as affirmations are nice words, they don't really loosen these negative core beliefs because you have to expose the lie, not just treat them with nice words. Right, so correct. If you did a uh, huh? video and and you did speak about highly sensitive uh, individuals, and when you are in tune with your own uniqueness, as the first caller was was saying, and then you 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 feel that more in in, in the world, where it's, the energy is you know kind of low, and then you have to kind of keep yourself to embrace what isn't always there and what you didn't have to, to um, be amplified at times. E even though you're not triggered, you know, it's, it's part of, I guess, everyday life. Uh, would you agree with that? Uh, you, you mean that, okay, say that again. So as you've done so much of this work, okay, so how, how is yeah. it showing up, even though you might, feel rotten going to work or you still feel that people around you are toxic what what's the difference now I, uh, you know what i i didn't get the whole 
question right away. So okay. I apologize for that. Uh, okay. it, it just sounded like it, it was cutting through. Okay, so what I'm saying is that even things, when things are not perfect and you go to work and you don't feel too happy about other people's uh, uh, treatment of you and their consciousness or lack thereof, once you've done this work, how is the experience different as opposed to before you were conscious of all of this? Well, um, universally, it could still be a little hurtful at times that if you just want to express the way you feel with another individual that sure. isn't there, um, whomever the label may be, and, and it does not necessarily have to be a, a romantic partner at all. And, you know, your dog, you know, my dog, she is the best. But, you know, sometimes you think, oh, well, if there was someone else that could just even listen a little bit, right. you know, and then it, it is what it is, right? Yeah, it is what it is. And, and I caution people about sharing emotions with people who uh, don't consider your feelings, because if you're sharing your emotions with somebody who doesn't have the empathy, then it's even worse than not sharing your emotions. So what I'm, I'm saying about when these things don't come up or they don't, you don't feel like they exist in the world for you, who you're embracing is really yourself, right? And who- Yes, yes. And yes. That gets overwhelming at times. It, I mean, just as a human being, I mean, it, 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 sometimes it does feel, you know, overwhelming. And then sometimes it doesn't. I mean, but then when it feels overwhelming, it's just, I guess it's just part of life. Um, what's your take on it? I mean, well, okay, you know, so even though we're well aware of it. Look, we're wired to connect. That's for sure. We want other people to understand. We need people. Uh, we're social creatures. And so we do the best we can to surround ourselves with other like-minded individuals who uh, are givers and takers. Because if you look at panel number eight, for example, okay, the DNA. Where yes, it's harmony. Know, right? There are little people climbing up the, the ladder. Yes. And it's teamwork. And one is helping the other up the ladder and the other one is being helped. So what, who are we? We're helpers and we're being helped. So it's always nice to experience every aspect of that to help another human that, being, right? And to be helped by yes, another human being. The universal unity. When, right. when you feel like, you know, you're right. working with everyone else and, and there's this harmony. Right. And so sometimes we just have to look for the subtleties of that. If it's not glaring, glaringly so in a relationship or you don't have a great friend that mirrors and attunes to you or great family members, then you just have to look for the subtleties because there's going to always be, as, as Laura mentioned, you know, there's always an aspect of the light in each one of us. Right. And so if we look the subtleties, at that's good yeah the little subtlety so it doesn't have to be this huge like wow you know i was able to share and they were able to ingest and digest and manifest some wisdom toward me i mean that's you know to me the ideal right that could be too extreme like like yeah that could that could be too extreme and too um almost like a love bombing it's just too it, it it's not doesn't go with the flow it, it, it it's too out there so it you know this is a good subject by the way and i'm glad you're speaking about it yeah i, I didn't to... mean it only is the love bombing it could be authentic some people just love like for example i love the idea of synergy wow i wish i were surrounded yes by tons of people that were on my team and i was on their team and i was really uh, happy for their growth and they were happy for my growth and you know what what a, what a beautiful concept and what a beautiful world and true 
growth partners in, in all aspects and, and, and giving people feedback so that they can get better and not just to put them down and demean, devalue, destroy. I mean, that's really the world that I'm wanting to create for all of you, my, my children, my, grand, grand, my grandson, hopefully I'll have more grandchildren and the future generations because the more we could teach the system gone right, the more you will be teachers to the next generation and that's our hope right because we don't want to um yes. we don't want to create chaos defenses and breakdowns in the next generation because every generation is just going to become weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker and we could be the cause of repairing ourselves so that we can repair for that okay so robert and also just in and also just embracing the subtleties of it day to day, you know, because even if there's cha there's not specific chaos in our lives, there's chaos in the world that we live in, it, it, whether, you know, even if it's an aspect of work, we're away from it, we just feel it in, in the universal, you know, as you said, the human race right now is. Human race, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk more about that. I'm, I'm really passionate about this because. My heart yes. goes out to uh, the, 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 the Ukrainian people and they're, you know, in a hostage situation. I've been feeling and, that a lot lately. Uh, yeah, and it's so sad. And then also, do you think those young Russian soldiers authentically want to be there? Do you think that? Absolutely you know, not. Absolutely not. So they're in a hostage situation. And so what yeah. I getting at is that inside each human being, if we approach people from a hum, human and humane point of view, then we can understand that there's so much hostage situation going on. And, uh, you know, like, yeah, I want to grow up and shoot people. Yeah, sure. I'll, I, I, I can't mm. believe it. Okay. Not really. Uh, but if, if, if not, re not, not really, right? Not really. So, so somehow the the big dream that I started with called Join the Human Race: Healing Global Disconnect. And you could go to my website. It's very underdeveloped, but it's another website I have called Healing Global uh, Disconnect. And my message is right there. And so the message really is that it's time to come together as a united humanity and to put our isms, whether they be political isms or race isms or religious isms or socioeconomic isms aside and really understand that number one, we are human beings, okay? Before we identify yes. ism, we're human beings. And so it's so important, especially today to take that stand that everybody has some kind of power, you, you see, to be the cause of their life. And sometimes exerting that power is dangerous. Okay, so for a young and there's a lot of cutoffs. Pardon me? There's a lot there's a there's a lot of cutoffs as well as you know, political as as you just said, political isms and then someone is is oh it's um it feels like everything kind of got very cold lately. There's very not cold. that warmness to embrace. Here's what we get in agenda, it feels. Agenda, uh, this is the same theme, Robert and everyone else listening, power and control versus uh, love and intimacy. And the more scared we get as a human race, the more we embrace what we don't deserve which is power being controlled and being powered over, or even the person who's powering. I don't see that they're getting a lot of light out of it either. They may get a lot of land out of it. They may get a lot of money out of it. I don't know. There are perks, I guess. It's just that as human beings, uh, we, we want to satisfy something meaningful and deeper in our mind body soul okay and that's not a pathway 
to satisfaction. So I'm, I'll, I'll be speaking more about that. And um, thanks, Robert, always for sharing. Thank you. It was, it was beautiful hearing from you tonight. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to enjoy li listening to the rest of the show. Got my beautiful dog sitting here. And she's, okay. She's, All right. You take care, Robert. But, yeah. Good hearing from you. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. So I, I hope you are all learning and learning how to think like a shrink. And if you look at the uh, the summation of each panel in the book, you'll see some bullet points there titled Think Like a Shrink. And that's for you to start connecting these dots so that you don't forever have to rely on therapy and that the, the right kind of therapy will help you to um, separate and individuate eventually and um, make you uh, be the cause of better outcomes for your life and not just uh, rely on forever therapy to do that um, for you. Of course, if you need support and you feel that you need somebody to come to, I'm not saying that, uh, 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 that that's a bad idea for, for everyone. Some people just need support and that's fine. Come, be supported as long as you want to. It's just that I'm hoping along the way that you learn something and you learn how to process your own feelings and you learn to really um, bust the limits on this bar, okay? No holds barred and uh, bust out of the psychological prison so that you can embrace a higher and more deserved bar and then manifest uh, a, a much better outcome for part two of your life. So uh, please don't hesitate to call in and also look for the blog on this topic, embracing what we deserve, not the narcissist. There's a beautiful article on my blog up there for you to read. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Good night, everyone. And if you've enjoyed my show, please subscribe to my channel. If you need help, please call the number below. And if you